Well, good morning, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to worship on this fourth Sunday during the season of Easter. Glad to have you joining us. It's a wonderful day out there, and we are very, very blessed during this season of Easter to be able to gather again, even though it's not in person to be able to worship our Lord during this difficult season that we continue to be in. Our help is absolutely, as the psalmist said, in the name of our Lord. And so we live with that confidence, and we are glad to be able to continue worshiping our God and our Lord in that way. Joining us today is Pastor Aticha. He is offering our sermon for this morning, and so as always, we are glad to have him co-presiding during our worship service this morning. Of course, the million dollar question that has been on many of our minds, we talked a little bit about this last week, is when are we going to be able to return back to gathering at the building here at Bethel, doing in-person worship? And the answer to that question continues to be, we don't yet know. If you heard Governor Walls this last uh, week, he talked about opening things up. Businesses are going to be opening up more tomorrow. We still are waiting to hear when it is that we as a church are going to be able to do the same kind of thing. Based on what the governor was saying, it looks like we might be targeting the end of May. No firm date on that yet, but be aware of the fact that your leadership team has already been in conversation about what it's going to look like when we are able to get back together. And we are paying very close attention to the governor and the Minnesota Department of Health. And we will be back here for in-person worship as soon as we're able. In the meantime, pay attention to our church's website. Uh, we are going to be starting a variety of new Zoom-based small groups here in the next couple weeks and we'll have more information on our website about that but that's going to be an opportunity uh, for us to use this wonderful technology that the lord has blessed us with in recent history to be able to gather together for bible study for fellowship and so we're going to be getting that going here in the next couple weeks um, of course the place to go to find out information about those small groups or if you'd like to be able to join us for these two or three worship packages and get those sent to you, that address is www.bethelstpaul.com. With that, I'll invite you to calm your hearts and quiet your minds as we begin our worship for this morning. We begin this morning as we always do in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you, there is forgiveness. Therefore, you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word and call upon him in prayer and praise, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we've sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained minister and servant of Christ, and by his authority alone, I have the privilege to therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you've gifted us with your great shepherd, with him who you sent into the world to guide us along your right path. Yet there have always been many voices competing for our attention, competing for our allegiance. By the power and through the aid of your Holy Spirit, help us always to A, recognize the sound of those voices which are strange and which want to steal us from your Son. B, help us always to run away from those voices and C, to only follow the voice of our true shepherd. We pray this blessing not only for us, but for all others you will bring into your fold. It is in his name that we pray. Amen. Our first lesson on this fourth Sunday of the season of Easter is found in the book of Acts, the second chapter, beginning with the 42nd verse. Luke writes, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the mighty wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second lesson for this morning is found in the book of 1 Peter, the second chapter, beginning with the 19th verse. Peter writes, For it is commendable if someone bears up under the pain of unjust suffering because they are conscious of God. But how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it? But if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God. To this you were called, because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd, the overseer of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the word of eternal life. Hallelujah. Our Holy Gospel reading for today comes from John chapter 10, verses 1 through 10. Very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, Anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climb in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought all out on his own, he goes ahead of them, and his sheep follow him before they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will 
run away from the him before they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate of the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am not uh, listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and to kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Greeting in the name of our Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, I am so glad to be here to provide a sermon. Uh, today, uh, I based on my sermon on the, today's reading, I've already read, on Gospel of John chapter 1 through uh, 10. Uh, I am talking about uh, the stranger and the sheep, the sheep and the stranger, probably um, this title might be unusual because uh, whenever, uh, as far as uh, John 10, chapter 10 is concerned, very common titles are the, the gates and the door, the voice of the Lord, the good shepherd and so on. I intentionally uh, want to talk about the sheep and the stranger because I want to share some practical examples through, uh, that I've gone through and my people gone through because of the stranger. Um, for your surprise, this is my probably my second sermon in English. Uh, I did English uh, sermon back in 2015 for only maybe 12 minutes. So as I'm talking to the stranger, probably preaching in English is a uh, stranger to me. So uh, that is why I'm in better family, because it's not going to be a stranger anymore. So I'm learning. That is why I'm, I'm, I'm going to be very familiar with English preaching. So um, the story of a stranger uh, starts in the Garden of Eden, when the serpent, Satan, through the serpent, uh, sneak into the Garden of Eden and mislead the first mankind, Eve, uh, I think uh, the serpent didn't go there as a thief or library, as a um, thinking. He goes as a counselor, even though he's a bad counselor. He counseled her, and uh, I don't think she took the, the serpent as a, a stranger because he didn't run away. The scripture doesn't tell us she ran away, but she uh, quietly conversed with him, so he, he went as a stranger. Uh, as Jesus Christ says in Matthew chapter 24, verses 5, many comes in my name, but they deceive. They are not going to tell us the right thing. So um, the, 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 the council was very bad because it displaced the human kind from uh, the place where God intended them to live forever. Uh, so uh, it is easy for us to, to understand about the, about the stranger because we have a very uh, emerging new stranger, that is coronavirus. So what makes coronavirus a stranger is uh, we don't know much about coronavirus. Uh, all the scientists, all the physicians and that are struggling to know about it. And uh, uh, whenever a stranger comes, people flee away because uh, the church is shut down, we are fully away from our job, and we lack, the, uh, lack in, in, our, in our home, that is a work of stranger. Because uh, coronavirus is stranger because we don't know more much about the epidemiological fact about coronavirus, uh, about the transmission, our mode of escape, and the silent symptom, how much it can stay on materials, and so on. 
there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of unknown things because it is uh, stranger. The other thing is we don't know about the therapeutic uh, fact about the treatment. They are searching, they are doing a lot of things, but still uh, nobody is quite sure about the treatment of coronavirus. I'm saying this because I'm talking about a stranger, because uh, coronavirus is stranger. Uh, so, uh, as I've said, I'm going to talk about sheep uh, for very few minutes. Uh, sheep are very peaceful, quiet, and harmless uh, in my country. Um, we had, we had a few uh, sheep, and uh, my relative has a lot of sheep. Most of the time, uh, they keep the sheep uh, at home. Uh, among the domestic animal, sheep is uh, the one who is just sharing house with uh, with people uh, next to dog and cat. So why they put the sheep is they are, they are so vulnerable. When Isaiah, uh, prophet Isaiah, talk about uh, the suffering of the coming uh, Jesus Christ, uh, he says uh, he led uh, like a lamb uh, to this uh, slaughters and. Uh, as a sheep people for a shearer, he is silent. That means uh, sheep is always uh, very peaceful, quiet, and harmless. And the other thing is uh, sheep is very uh, vulnerable because uh, as we have seen in uh, Ezekiel chapter 34, it talks about sheep uh, a lot and uh, they are so vulnerable because sheep, uh, sheep lambs are they use it for food and then we put on all their wool, we clothe them, we eat them, uh, so they are so vulnerable and they are defenseless, they are most of the time defenseless. That is why um, in my culture they keep the sheep uh, at home. Uh, what I want to talk about is, um, as Jesus Christ said in chapter, Matthew chapter 24, uh, everybody comes uh, most of the time. when. Uh, somebody come to steal the sheep, they usually doesn't come as a robber or as a thief, probably they come as a shepherd. Probably they just approach the sheep giving grasses and giving something else, but uh, usually they don't approach as, um, uh, as a robber. So there are a lot of leaders. Let me, let me share one of my, our experience in, in Ethiopia. Uh, for so long time, Ethiopia, the, the shepherd, the leaders are acting like a stranger for a long time. For your surprise, in Ethiopia, they have never had a, a free, fair and a free relation for the last 120, 150 years. And it is a century and a half. Because um, the, the leader doesn't have any, uh, the right vote from the, from the people and uh, they are so stranger to the people. Uh, that is, their entrance is not the right entrance because uh, they came as a rebel and then they took the power by gun and then they, they lead the people by gun. Uh, uh, so when, uh, when uh, leaders uh, become a stranger, it's so hard to call the sheep. Uh, the other thing is whenever the leader who came through as a rebel and uh, took power by the gun, People, they don't recognize their voice too. Whatever, whatever they say is not going to work for the, for the people. And then the people are keep protesting. Um, and then uh, I say here a scattered sheep. Um, I'm referring to, particularly I'm referring to the refugees around the world. Um, the refugees around the world uh, is uh, not because of the climatic condition is not good there, it's not because of the weather, uh, mostly not because of the weather, and not because of the poverty, and as well as not because of the diseases. Mainly it is because of the civil war induced by the leader, and the uh, human rights violation, and the dictatorship and mass killing. They are fleeing from their, their own people, from their own leader who claim to be a shepherd for them, but really in a, in a real case and in a reality, uh, they are not. So, um, uh, if you take around uh, in Washington, D.C. and Maryland, there are about more than 300,000 Ethiopians in Maryland and Washington, D.C. 95% of them flee from their own leader, from the stranger, what, 
for my poor them stranger today. So uh, the people produce a kind of uh, misophonia. I call this misophonia. Is a, it is um, it is a, a strong reaction to some specific sound and voice. People are misophonic to their own uh, leaders. I say they are their leaders, but actually they, the leaders call themselves the leaders. And then they, they, they don't want to listen to the leaders because uh, the leader didn't come in the right gate. Uh, as our uh, scripture today says, uh, if uh, something is coming uh, another way rather than the gate, the right gate, they are not the shepherd, they are the strangers. So uh, the people doesn't want to hear the voice of the leaders and the leader doesn't want to listen to the voice of the people. Uh, whenever the, the leader put a law, the people is going to protest and then they are going to import the command post. They have to lead those people like that. Because there is no any uh, voice recognition among the leaders and uh, the, the, the sheep. Uh, when I'm saying this, I'm not saying all 100% those leaders in Ethiopia have been like this, but very few. Uh, we had very, very, very few local leaders and so on. Uh, the voice and the name matters, as I read from uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 10, um, when Mary was uh, as an empty tomb, weeping out there, uh, Jesus Christ uh, asked her whom she is looking for, and then she thought he is a gardener. She missed the voice. She made the voice. But uh, God is always good. He knows uh, where our shortness, where we shorten them. Um, he called her again, Mary. As soon as he, say, as he said Mary, she shouted out and they said, Rabbi. So the, 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 the name matters. Whenever people call us by our own name, uh, probably as an immigrant, as a refugee, if somebody call me, if you call me, if he say you and that, I feel kind of a, a kind of a, maybe a little sadness, because if somebody recognizes your name, for example, you the, the person who you don't know too much, recognize your name and say, called by your name, probably you respond. That is what is lacking between the leader, the true leader, and the, the, the stranger, or the leader who call, call themselves a leader, but actually they don't do the right thing. Uh, let me share you a kind of story, true story. My mom, had, we had very few sheep, and then her sheep was stolen and taken to about 20 miles away. Uh, so she helped her, uh, she, uh, her ship is somewhere else. And then she went there, and then they are, not, uh, they, are not, they are not willing to give her back. And instead, they said, we'll pull a flag of sheep together, and then probably you can find your own. And then uh, she said, OK. And then they bring a lot of sheep together. And then they told her, point out to your own sheep. And then she said, I don't want to just point out my finger to my sheep. I can call my sheep by name. If the sheep is not responding, I gave up all the process. And then she called by name. And then as you see uh, on the picture, the other are eating their grass. One is very uh, attentive to the sound. And then uh, it's like my mom's sheep. And then she got her sheep just simply calling by uh, the sheep's name after six months. The, the, the person who stole the, the, um, stolen the, the sheep already give, uh, already given the name for the sheep. The sheep is responding to her old name. God called us our son. Whoever come and call us something else, we still have an original name. We are the son of God. Yeah, and I will leave you with this, uh, the, what God was telling the Israelites and the leaders and the sheep uh, on the, the, 
uh, Ezekiel chapter 34. Uh, this is a three-dimensional message of God uh, through his the prophet. He, God is just not only talking to the leaders, not only, he, he also talked to the, the sheep. In the, in the first, uh, in the Ezekiel chapter 34, uh, God says, wow to the, the shepherd who only take taking care of themselves. They don't care about the, the sheep, they eat, and they just put the sheep's wool has the clothes. Still, they don't care about uh, their sheep, and then he said, wow to them. In the second place, he, these are the disobedient, uh, disobedient uh, sheep. For the disobedient, there were a disobedient sheep in the in his sheep too. And then he talked to them, I will judge between one sheep to another one. You trample the pastor with your feet, shovel the weak with your trunk and shoulder, batting the weak sheep with your arm until you have driven them out. Still, God is not only talking to the bad leader or the stranger. He speaks to us whenever we, are, we get out of his way. And God is always fair. And in the, in the third, uh, he said to the obedient sheep in the Israel people, he said, I myself search for my sheep and look after them. I will save my flock. And then God is very fair. Whenever God talks, he talks fairly. Finally, I, uh, God is always with us. He says, uh, I will be with you until the end of uh, uh, the day. In uh, Matthew chapter 28 and verses 20. And uh, he defends us. What, the story, what I like most of the time, I grew up in a military uh, situation where military is doing everything to people and uh, human rights violation and so on. Uh, there are times when uh, the, 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 the militant come and get uh, kids uh, out of the hand of mom and or dad. And then when uh, Jesus Christ at the end of his uh, session in the morning, uh, when the, uh, the Pharisees, the soldiers, and the people come to capture Jesus Christ with the guidance of uh, Judah, and they ask him, uh, whom are you looking for? They said, Jesus of Nazareth. If it's so, let this man go free. Always he's defending us. Well, whatever situation we are today, uh, this uh, corona situation, always God defend us. He is there for us. And lastly, um, always he promised salvation and freedom. Whoever enters through me will, will be saved. They will come in and go out and uh, find the pastor. It is a, the freedom through Jesus Christ. We have a freedom because Jesus freed us through his blood, through his suffering. He is coming back soon. Um, let God. Uh, He's always with us. We have to. We have to always uh, be uh, know that God is always defending us, and then our freedom is always uh, in Him. And let God bless the world we hear. As a epilogue, friends, if you have not normally joined us, new to joining us uh, at Bethel for worship, Pastor Aticha came to us as part of an internship. He was ordained in a different Christian denomination, is wanting to be a pastor in the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, and uh, Bethel has been privileged for a number of months now to be a place where he can do this internship, or as he said during his uh, opening remarks that he is learning English. Uh, I say that in large part because, first of all, it continues to be an incredible privilege to work alongside Pastor Aticha in our ministry and also for Bethel to be a place uh, of welcome and a place of introduction for Pastor Aticha into the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod. Um, but today specifically, I offer that to you as well because uh, I was quite surprised to hear that this was only the second time 
that Pastor Aticha has preached in English, um, and that is a surprise because I, I know you join me in saying how much blessed we are uh, by your clear interpretation of God's inerrant and infallible word, and so our continued appreciation for your partnership with us in sharing the clear, the true gospel of Jesus Christ. So thank you, brother, for that. With that, friends, speaking of unity, we continue uh, our service by joining our voices in these words of Christian unity uh, that know no language barriers whatsoever. And we do so through the words of the Apostles' Creed, which begin, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Let's pray. Almighty God, we again pray for your spirit of discernment during these days of concern and confusion. We pray that as there are often many voices vying for our attention and our allegiance, that we will only listen to the voice of your Son, our Savior and our very good Shepherd. By the sound of his voice, bring us calm these days, bring us clarity, bring us purpose, and bring us hope. Because if that first Easter Sunday was anything, it was about hope that had been made real where that had seemed impossible. Father, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we've done over these past weeks, so we continue to lift to you, Almighty God, a host of folks around our world including our elected leaders, both at the state and federal levels. And we especially ask your grace and your wisdom to continue to be with both Governor Walls and President Trump. We pray for our frontline service personnel, for our doctors, our nurses, firefighters, law enforcement, for anyone out there working for the public good. We pray for our nation's business leaders, and we ask especially today, Father, a special blessing to be with those who own, who manage, and work at businesses which will be reopening tomorrow. Give us the resources to reinvest in these neighbors that our economy will begin to recover in the coming days. We pray for those American workers who for the time being will continue to remain furloughed as the economy gradually reopens. Give these saints not only their literal daily bread, but give them a double portion of patience to continue meeting these days ahead. We pray for our nation's educators who continue to work just as tirelessly from their remote and their virtual classrooms around the country as they did in their literal classrooms. To which we give you immeasurable thanks that during such a time as this, we continue to be blessed by the gifts and resources of virtual classrooms, of technology that keeps us just as easily and seamlessly connected as we could have possibly imagined. We continue to lift to you those who have become sick, who have succumbed not just to this coronavirus, but to every flu, cancer, and other malady which has beset us during this once-in-a-lifetime spring. We continue to lift you, Almighty God, those who are sick, and we pray for their recovery. For those who have succumbed, we pray for their families. 
that they'll receive the sure and certain peace which comes from the care that you offer to us through Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we now pause from the silence of our hearts to offer to you others who have occupied our hearts and minds throughout this week. Father, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, your psalmist once wrote, Our help is in the name of the Lord. May all people use the words of that 124th psalm to cry out to you, not in pain, but in praise, because of your never-failing faithfulness. Through the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who first taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. And now, brothers and sisters, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor, and may He give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.